Good morning, everyone. Hey, it is good to be back again with another Sunday School lesson. Again, this is Reverend Parrish coming to you with our lesson for today. I want to thank everyone for coming out and uh, attending Sunday School, and hopefully you invited someone else to come and enjoy this message also. Uh, hopefully everyone had a blessed and good week, and uh, as this world continues to tumble along, we continue to tumble right along, right along and following God in what he wants to do. And hopefully the Holy Spirit that we spent felt in church Sunday has continued throughout the week as everyone continues to be blessed. Well, we have a very good lesson for today. We are staying, you know, in the book of Ezra as our previous lesson was dealing with Ezra and the children of Israel getting to go back home and start rebuilding their city and the temple and the foundation and doing all the things that was needed. But here we're going to talk about a little bit about freedom to worship. They're free to worship and they're going to be given a decree regarding that. Uh, but first, let us start by uh, opening up in prayer. Can we all bow our heads, please? Lord, Heavenly Father, God, Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for this another glorious, blessed day. Father, I ask you to touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Father, as we come to you once again, just to study your word, Father, and to learn of you. Father, please open up our minds and open up our hearts, Father, to receive your word. And let us leave after Sunday school better than we were when we came in, Father, and taking things that we have learned and in placing them in our lives on how we too, Father, can worship freely, Father, because of your grace and your mercy. Be with us. Bless our church. Bless this world. Look over everything that's going on in this nation, Father, and the countries above, Father, and just guide us and keep us, Father, and help us, Father, to live accordingly. Father, we pray this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> All right, everyone. As I said, our lesson, you know, it dovetails off of our previous lesson. And, you know, in our previous lesson, basically what we were talking about was the people returning, returning home and preparing for travel and being blessed by the other by, by members of their families who were staying and other individuals you know in babylon as they was getting ready to take their journey back home to go back to jerusalem and set up shop and start doing things and building and making things the way that the lord wants them to be made and in this particular lesson uh they're going to have free we're going to learn about them being free to worship, being free to worship. And our devotional reading was found in Ezra chapter six, verses one through 12. Our background scripture is also in Ezra chapter five, six through five, six, one through 12, and 10, one through five. All right, seeing so uh, we're gonna go through this and hopefully everybody can get a good in light on what the Lord is saying to us in this particular lesson here. First, uh, I, I kind of check the stage on this particular lesson here. The children of Israel, you know, they had gotten back. They were there and they were starting to work and getting things done. They were moving forward with that, but then they ran up on some opposition to their rebuilding. You know, and previously in chapter four, it kind of explains that to us and lets us know everything that was happening because of the, that op, that um, opposition that they came across with their building. And you, we know that Nehemiah, he, uh, Jeremiah brought in some, some led a group of individuals there also under uh, one of the kings to actually build the wall. And they ran in the opposition also. And so here they're running in the opposition to the actually build, rebuilding that temple and doing the things that the Lord wants them to do. And in chapter four, I'm gonna start with chapter four prior to we getting into our lesson simply because it kind of sets the stage on what we're going to be talking about here. And in chapter four, starting with verse one, it reads, when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles was building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and to the heads of the families and said, let us help you build because like you, we seek your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time of Esther Hanan, king of Assyria. 
Assyria, who bought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jesu, and the rest of the heads of the family of Israel answered, You have no part with us in building a temple to our God. We alone will build it for the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. Then the people around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. They hired counselors to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. See, so some building has started, then all of a sudden building was stopped simply because of the opposition. And see, and they took theirs a little a step further to make sure that they could stop it, was they, they sent a letter to one of the to the king to the king of Persia, or to Zacharias, I believe. If I'm forgive me if my pronunciation isn't correct, but in that particular letter they sent to him, they they sent it, and this is what it said: The king should know that the Jews who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem and are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. They are restoring the walls and repairing the foundations. Furthermore, the king should know that if this city is built and its walls are restored, no more taxes, tribute, or duty will be paid, and the royal revenue will suffer. Now, since we are under obligation to the palace and it is not proper for us to see the king dishonored, we are sending this message to inform the king so that the search may be made in the archives of your possessors, predecessors. In these records, you will find that this city is a rebellious city, troublesome to kings and provinces and a place of rebellion from ancient times. This is why this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is built, and its walls are restored, you will be left with nothing in trans Raphius. The king then sent a reply, and he had his people go out and actually search to find in the archives if anything did exist. And he did find something, and so he sent a reply back to them, sharing with them, yes, I have find something, have found something. And with this, Put a stop to the building. Tell them they can't do anything until I send word to them that they can do it. And so what they did, once they got that information, they went back to the, to, to the children and they shared with them that, nope, this is a stop. And everything came to a standstill. There was no building on the wall. There was no building on the foundation. There was no building on the temple. And this took place and they lay barren there until the second year of King Darius. Okay, and so and then basically what happened in chapter in, in chapter five, you know, it goes on and then some things are brought up to date with us on that. Now Haggai, the prophet of Zechariah, the prophet, a descendant of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, who was over then. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shalat the Jezu, son of Josadak, set to work to rebuild the house of the God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God was with them, helping them. All right. And then at that time, Tatinina, because they had started rebuilding. For some reason, they had just started to rebuild it under a new regime. And now this Tatinina, one of the governors of Chan Ephesus, and Sadatar, Bozen, and the eye, and their associates went to them and asked, Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? They also asked, What are your names? So that we can report them, you know, to the king. Okay? This is a copy of the letter to Nida, governor of trans Atheus, and Tinopanai, and their associates, the officials of trans Atheus, sent to King Darius the report they sent him read as follows. And seeing then basically what they did was they 
went back to the king, Darius now, and shared with him, hey, they're rebuilding this temple, and no one has given us words that they were supposed to do this, and we're just addressing this with you. And they told him if he would search the archives, you know, of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar, he may find if anything was actually left in writing. And so they went back and King Darius actually researched and came up with that document that uh, King Cyrus had, 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 had uh, put together. And so then he came back to them and he responded to them in a different, different matter. After that, in, in their letter, they said, the king should know that we went to the district of Judah to the temple of the great God. The people are building it with large stones and placing the temple through the walls. The work is being carried on with diligence and it's making rapid process under their direction. We questioned the elders and asked them, who authorized you to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? We also asked them their names so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information. This is the answer they gave us. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. We are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, one that a great king of Israel built and finished. And we know that was King Solomon. But because our fathers are angered the God of heaven, he handed them over to Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldean king of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to rebuild the house of God. He even removed from the temple of Babylon the gold and silver articles of the house of God with Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem and bought to the temple in Babylon. See, so they went to him and they just shared all these things and now he has those. And so now King, King, King Darius, the decree of Darius, King Darius then issued an order and they searched in the archive stored in the treasury of Babylon. A stroll was found in the synagogue in the providence of Midian, and this was written on it. In the year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem, that the temple be rebuilt in a place to present sacrifice and let it be foundations be laid. It is to be 90 feet high, 90 feet wide, with three courses of large stones and one of timber. See, so he sent this, he keeps went back and after he done read and he see all the things that needed to be done. So he, he, he know that uh, King Cyrus had actually set it up that they were supposed to be there and the people were supposed to be there. See, and so now that they've got that information and he, the king has that information, what the king does is he sends some information back to them, which come brings us up to our lesson today. Okay, right there in, 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 in our lesson today. So let's let's jump let's jump in it from that particular point. Okay, Ezra chapter six, verses one through twelve. King Darius then issued an order. Now, this is what King Darius. And they searched in the archive stored in the treasury of Babylon. A stroll was found in the vicinity of the, in the providence of Media, and this was written on it. In the first year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem, that the temple be rebuilt as a place of present sacrifice, and let its foundations be laid. It is to be 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide with three courses of large stones and one of timber. The costs are to be paid by the royal treasury. Also the gold and the silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and bought to Babylon, are to be returned to their places in the temple in Jerusalem. They are to be deposited in the house of God. Then verse six, now then, to Tanani, governor of Transvaphius, and Sethar, Bozenii, and you other officials of that providence, stay away from them. So he's telling them to stay away from there. 
Do not interfere with the work on this temple of God. Let the governor of the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to do for these elders of the Jews in the construction of this house of God. Hmm. So the king, done, he's telling them now, not only are you to go back, but as the governors, you need to stay away from these people. You need to leave these people alone because they are to be able to rebuild this temple. They'll be able to rebuild this wall. They'll be able to rebuild the foundation. All of these things need to take place. And he's telling them explicitly that uh, not only are you going to stay away from them, but you're going to give them some support financially in making it happen. Because he goes on and he says, their expenses are to be fully paid out of the royal treasury from the revenues of Tranimaphius so that the work will not stop. So they've got to now help farming. And these same people who was in opposition against them, now the Lord is working against them and they got to help pay to get this temple rebuilt in the city, restructured. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, male lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven and wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil as requested by the priests in Jerusalem must be given to them daily without fail so that they may offer sacrifices pleasing to the God of heaven and pray for the well-being of the king and his son. See, so the king did two things right there within that. One, he told them, you're going to give them all the things for the sacrifices. You're going to give them the animals. You're going to give them the salt, the olive oil. You're going to give them the wine. You're going to give them everything that they need to be successful on a daily basis. And because, one, they will be pleasing to God, and then also they will pray for the well-being of the king and his sons. So they'll pray for, for me and my family because of what we're doing here. And then he keeps going further in verse 11. He says, furthermore, I decree that if anyone defiles this evidence, a beam is to be pulled from their house and they are to be impelled on it. Now that right there is us within itself. Here the king makes a decree saying anybody gets in their way, anybody who goes against what they are doing and tries to keep them from doing it, their beam from their own house needs to be pulled out and then they're supposed to be lodged on top of it. And in other words, they're out to die. And then their home is to be destroyed. So no opposition was to come against the children of Israel and what they were doing at this particular time. And for this crime, their house to be made a pile of rubble. Then he goes on in verse 12 and he says, May God who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who lifts a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple of God. So he said, long as I'm king, long as we're around, can't nobody do anything to bring any of this down. And he said, I, Darius, have decreed it. Let it be carried out with diligence. See, so the people had gotten back. The people were there working. The people were doing everything that they could to get that foundation laid, to get them wall, that wall rebuilt, and to get the temple you know, restructuring and to get the city back up and running. But then they ran up on this opposition. Now, some may say, you know, they brought a little bit of this opposition upon themselves because remember, these individuals who had came to them to try to keep them from doing their job in the first place, they came saying that they wanted to help them to rebuild the city to help them build the temple and to do something called, they said they had been lifting up God while they you, you, you know, while they were there. But the elders, the, the, the governors, the individuals who came, the leadership from, from, from the people chose not to use that. They told them, no, we don't need your help. Mm -mm. 
We don't want y'all to have you. We don't want nothing to do with y'all. We don't want y'all over here helping. This is something that God has put on our hearts, and we're going to be doing this ourselves. And what these other individuals did, they, they, they found that to be insulting in so many words. And they decided, oh, okay, we, we'll show you. We, 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 all right, all right. And so then they took it upon themselves to go to the king and have that king church to all tribes and find out all this information about how a bunch of rebellious city, you know, Jerusalem was and the people and the kings and the things that they had done while they were in rule in that particular countryside. And he found it. And so he put a king of Persia, put a halt to everything. But now they get in an opportunity to get back into doing it simply because a new governor has came into place because they had took it upon themselves to rebuild, to start rebuilding on their own. And they caught wind of it. And they found that they said, hey, who told y'all y'all could do this? And so they went straight to the king and, and, and did some research. And the king pulled out that, that article and he read it. And he said, well, we're going to give them everything they need. But in fact, we're going to even help finance it. So God removed those obstacles out of their way so that they became free to worship. Now you stop and think, and you, you look at the story, and you say, hey, this is an interesting story, and I'm glad to see how this all happened, and all these things came together, you know, through God to make it happen so that the city was rebuilt, and the temple was rebuilt, and the foundations were laid, the wall was built, everything was taken care of that needed to be taken care of. But how in the world does all that reply to me, apply to me? When you look at us today, we, you know, we have opportunities to come and serve the Lord. And there's opposition that comes our way. Now, the thing is, when that opposition comes our way, what do we do? Do we sit back and just put everything on hold and don't do anything? Or do we try to find an avenue or a way to move around it so that we can get the work of God done so that it continues and in our lives do you personally have oppositions on your job or in your family or in your community or in society within a whole that could block you from accomplishing the goals and doing the things that you want to do you find ways and you utilize the resources to get around those things so that you can accomplish your goal and see, we are very fortunate as Christians and believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, we have that buckler. We have someone that we can go to when we go sincerely out of our heart and ask for that guidance and that direction and move out of the way and let God step in. He will start to remove those obstacles out of your way. That's what God does. He's there to help us. He's there to make us prosper. He wants us to live according to his teaching and to accept his will and his word and go forward and accomplish the task at hand. So you should look at yourself and you should say, what, you know, what am I dealing with right now? And how do I, you know, gain from from what what's happening to me how do i take this negative and turn it into a positive how do i take this obstacle and turn it into a winning piece for me simply by going to god and asking for his guidance and direction and he's going to lead people to you or give people put people in your life that you can work through to accomplish your goal. See, the people didn't do this themselves. God put the king in place to do these things because God saw the opposition that they were in. He knew that that temple wasn't being built. He knew that the walls weren't going up, that foundation wasn't being led because of the opposition that they had encountered. But God, I believe he did that also for a reason, too, so the people would see that, no, this isn't going to be an easy ride. 
Everything's not going to just be given to you all at once and let you just move forward. No, there was some opposition. God knew about that opposition. And he just wanted, I believe he wanted to see how the people was going to respond, how the thing was going to happen. And then after so many years of not doing anything, they decided to get up off their dust and go back to work. Go back to work. And then someone else saw them doing the same thing, questioned them and checked it out. And then everything that they needed came their way because of what God had put in place. And that's what God is doing for us. He's giving us that freedom to worship, to serve him, to lift him up, and to call on his blessed name by placing things in front of us and around us that help us to elevate him to the plateau where he definitely is and shall always be. Powerful lesson. I believe it's a powerful, powerful lesson. And we should take the words of this lesson and just place it in our heart and utilize it to help us daily as we continue forward. Well, all right. Hopefully someone got something out of that. And hopefully this lesson will ring in your heart. And hopefully next Sunday you'll bring somebody else back to Sunday school with you. And we will continue to learn the word of God and continue to grow spiritually and let the Holy Spirit guide us continuously. All right, let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for touching our hearts, Father, and just open up our minds, Father, and, and letting us understand this lesson, Father, allowing us to learn about the children and what they went through and the opposition that they came across, Father, in their endeavors, and how, Father, you stepped in and you moved things, you moved the pieces so that everything will work out okay. And help us, Father, understand that you're there for us. Keep us, guide us, and lead us. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. All right, our next lesson for next week, the title of it is Free to Celebrate. Free to Celebrate. And the devotional reading is Ezra 6, verses 13 through 22. Our background scripture is from Ezra chapter 6, 13 through 22, and Leviticus 23, 4 through 8. So pick those up and read it and see why there's a free to celebrate and why that was given to the people also. They get, ah, oh, this, is, this is awesome. So invite somebody else to Sunday school. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord continue to guide you. And his continents continue to fall freshly up on you. And may he continue to give you peace. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed.